the program tonight, so I didn't have a chance to look at that. Cool. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're here. All right, guys, we're going to yeah. go dark, and then uh, off we go. Okay. Hey guys, great you're back again for another edition of Sob Talk Live. Focus tonight is something I hope we're going to get you excited about, and that is the Sob Owners Convention 2022. So, Mark, I'm excited about this program tonight. Absolutely. So tonight we're going to be talking to two prominent figures in the Sob community. We'll be talking to Sandy Bogage, um, who is the uh, uh, basically the head of the Sob Owners Club of North America, and we'll be talking with Tom Donnie who is the uh, lead over at the Saab Heritage Museum. So lots of exciting talk tonight. We're going to be going over a lot of, uh, you know, what to expect and what situations we'll be looking forward to. So uh, let's get to it, Lee. Well, let's do. So the uh, Saab Heritage Car Museum of the USA is located in Sturgis, South Dakota. So, you know, that's really kind of been sort of the middle of the country, but still kind of out there in the middle of nowhere. And there are good reasons to make the drive if you're up in canada heck drive on down that's pretty close to you and uh i think it's going to be about a 12 or 14 hour drive for me but there's so much to do in that particular area that uh, we hope we're going to convince you tonight that it is worth the time and worth the drive so let's welcome our guests uh sandy bogage he is the uh president of the sob club and then uh, tom donnie who is the founder of the sob heritage museum hey guys glad you could join us Hey guys. Yeah, thanks hey. for having us on. Uh, thanks so, so much. Yeah, you bet. So, Tom, you're in Arizona right now. And uh, what's the weather back in South Dakota? I'll bet it's just colder than hell. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, below zero. So, nothing good. But the, the nice thing about South Dakota is we, in the Black Hills, because it is a bit of a micro climate there, is, you know, when we left, we had had some 60 plus degree weather. So, uh, it, it, goes up and down it does that in the summer too we get some really cool nice nights in the hills um, it's not your north dakota south dakota typical weather uh, because you do have those black hills there and it's uh would remind you of being you know kind of in colorado to be honest it's, mm. it's pretty gorgeous people really love it We'll get to that in a second uh, and a good reason to make the trip. So the Saab Owners Convention, here is the website. You can go to SaabClub.com and look for the convention tab. And here's a lot of the details. But it's coming up here July 21st to the 24th, as you can see out there in Sturgis, South Dakota. And Sandy, what's registration looking like right now? So we've got um, almost 200 people who have already signed up to uh, attend the convention. Uh, the show field itself uh, is a separate uh, piece because we have a limited size, but we already have over 50% of our show field. That's going to be concourse and people's choice. Uh, that's already 50, over 50% uh, take spoken for. Uh, we, um, so we we're, we're really um, have a higher amount of people that have registered than we've ever had before. We, we aren't even usually... Uh, open to be signing up until March or April. So we're really excited by the um, the amount of, uh, you know, activity there's been. Yeah, well, I'm sure the museum is a huge draw. And I, for folks, Tom, who don't know anything about it, kind of give us a quick once over of what the museum is and, and what you're going to have for us once we get there this summer. Sure. So the museum, we've got roughly 100 cars on display. And uh, those represent from the oldest Saab in America that's actually driven, um, and it's a 1950 all the way up through. We should have uh, one or two of the uh, 9.4Xs and, of course, some new Gen 9.5s. Mm -hmm. So we've got everything in between. Of course, we have, I, I forget the number now, but it's, I think, 16 of the former GM Heritage cars. Um, Bill Jacobson is bringing out, uh, and Carol Ann and Kim, they're bringing out, I think, a uh, one of the Aspen 9000s. We're getting the Bob Sinclair uh, motorcycle, the BSA. Uh, we've had, I bet, we've probably got about half a dozen vehicles going to be donated at the time of, <clears throat> of the convention to be put on display in the museum. So uh, we'll have some, I mean, we've obviously got the most unique 
display of Saab's uh, in America. And what makes our display so different than Sweden, and those that have been to Sweden realize that that is Valhalla, that is, you know, heaven. Um, but most of those cars are brand new. Uh, you know, they're cars that rolled off the assembly line. All of ours are cars with stories and have history. And that's what makes ours really unique. And Peter Backstrom, when he was at the museum, for the night at the museum in 2019, 19, I think it was, that's what he remarked. He said, these cars are, are cars that have been modified, that, you know, they're just, everything had an owner, every car had an owner, and that owner had a life. So we try to tag that story to the cars. So I think people will really enjoy that aspect. Well, Sandy's laughing right now because I put up on the screen the uh, the famous uh, deer sob. So, uh, Tom, you want to tell us the story behind this car? <laughs> the is, deer is this Vigan? The blue one? Or yeah, the, the blue Vigan. Vigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, uh, we did what we called sob stampedes, right? So, we had to move 150 cars roughly from Fort Dodge, Iowa to Sturgis, South Dakota. Well, that's, that's a Western theme. So, we had a guy drop a stampede that was a cow. We call it the Saab Stampede. So we solicited folks from around the country to come help us drive cars in a stampede on out to South Dakota. Unfortunately, there are deer out here that mix in with the cattle and the Saabs. And this particular Saab um, picked up a deer in southern Minnesota. So uh, Jerry Danner, Mile High Saab, which no longer exists, but obviously Jerry's a huge uh, fan of Saab and a huge uh, a supporter of the museum. He donated his time and effort to restore the car beautifully and the Rocky Mountain Saab Club all worked on it and uh, it was just an amazing uh, job they did in restoring that car and bringing it back to life. So a great example of uh, the stories that go behind the cars, right? Yes. We keep a deer head hanging out the window. I don't know if that was came up on the screen. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. We yeah. just saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we got a deer rump in the background, and people walk up. And we, I mean, you got to remember, most of the people that come to the museum, they don't even really know what a sob is. Um, so they're like, you know, well, we really don't want to look at sobs, you know, or sabs. Sabs. But, um, <laughs> once, once you get them in and you talk about the aircraft heritage, we have a friction tester. It's the first car we show mm -hmm. them. We talk about how those are used at runways all over the world, and then we show them an Eric Carlson car, that, you know, the 178 that was a barn find, the $400 that now is one of the most expensive sobs in the world. Um, you capture their imagination right away, and then people, they absolutely love it. I mean, people who, we had bikers come in who were like, well, I'm not going to look at any rah, 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 sobs, and they end up yeah. spending two hours and laughing at each other because they bought Saab memorabilia, you know? So it's just, you get this crazy <laughs> thing going on there where, where people have no idea what it is. And by the time they leave, they're like, hey, where can I buy one? You know, they're excited yeah. about it. <laughs> So, uh, Tom, I just want to let you know, uh, there's a beautiful woman sitting in that car next to you. We can all see her. Hey, Patty, how are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we, I just wanted we to shout out, shout you out. We got caught on the road, so we had to pull over. What do you, and what kind of car is that? Is that a Saab you're in, Tom? Uh oh, a Saab? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2004 convertible. Sweet. Um, beautiful car that we got from uh, Anthony Farah here down in Phoenix. So um, I guess it's not under warranty. Every time something breaks, I'm like, hey, Anthony, is it still under warranty? And for some reason, it's not covered. Uh, yeah, everything, everything we drive is Saab. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, yeah, it's the disease. It, it just happens, right? All right, so let's talk. Let's just talk about some things that are a little bit different this year. And um, one of those is um, you are going to be, uh, well, first of all, you're looking for volunteers, right? Sandy, let's walk that path and then we'll circle back to some of the other things that are going to be a little bit different. Sure. Yeah, the uh, convention is happening on the grounds at the museum. And typically where we have a host city and we rely on uh, locals from the local club, and this time there isn't necessarily a local club out of Sturgis. There are a lot of people coming to the museum uh, to help out there. But if you're interested in helping out for part of the convention, uh, we try to have some small thank you gifts for you. And um, you can get there through the website. You can sign up to, to uh, uh, volunteer. There's also a sign up if you're interested in judging and helping to judge this year. We're changing, streamlining the concourse and people's choice 
as I had said earlier, we have a limited show field. Also, Tom's cars and the museum's cars, and there are going to be some presentations. Tom mentioned uh, the uh, that there are some people donating cars, and those cars are going to be arriving during the convention or, or just before. Uh, we already have uh, our first uh, announced uh, title sponsor, ScanWest Automotive, out in uh, Seattle, and they're going to be uh, bringing a car uh, for the museum, and we're going to be focusing on that. So again, uh, some, some of those uh, things are a little different, um, but if you're interested in helping out, please go to the website, uh, click on that uh, volunteer, one of those volunteer links and uh, join us. And I would say the same thing for the museum. We need volunteers too. Ours are a little bit different. Ours really won't be work per se. Most of ours will be kind of watching cars mm -hmm. and explaining some cars to people and um, of course, with the volunteers, we may be able to tempt a few of them with some drive or some rides to help lure them into working a little bit. But uh, you, you'd mentioned Scan West and you know Rob and Kathy and Craig there. They're, they've been awesome. They uh, they donated five thousand uh, dollars before the end of the year to the museum. Thanks, that's guys. That's pretty incredible to get a yeah. check for five grand. Uh, we had some other people donate money who wished to remain anonymous, but there we, we had a five thousand dollar donation from an anonymous overseas person or group and then uh, also a gentleman family um, trust fund from the Great Lakes area that donated three thousand dollars so we are getting money come in we are a public charity <clears throat> so we're a little bit different than the museum because you know we're trying to sustain a a building and a display long term you know mm -hmm. not for not for two years not for five years not for 20 years but we're trying to go 50 to 100 years so um, you know we're trying to actively you know, use this as a moment in time to hopefully capture the hearts and capture the some of the dreams of the people out there that have SOPs today, who just like Jerry Danner and, you know, just like Rob and Kathy and other people, um, Central um, Penn SOP Club, uh, Swedish Car Days, a lot of people have donated money to us. And, and that money we, we try to use smart and, and, and set things up as much as possible for long-term uh, long uh, establishments. Hey, Mark, what questions you got? Well, one thing that I was uh, just came to mind when uh, Tom was talking about the longevity of the museum is that back at the uh, Saab Voters Commission 2021, uh, when Jerry Danner was announcing the retirement of his uh, a mile high Saab Club shop, he gave us a little bit of a financial education moment. And um, I'm wondering uh, if for the longevity of the museum, I would imagine that there would be some sort of investment vehicle that's helping the museum keep uh, remain solvent, along with donations, of course. But uh, I don't know. Is that is that something that um, is one of the factors that's helping the longevity of the of the museum? Is, is basically you know monetary is always going to be concerned. So I was just curious. Yeah. So without going into a lot of detail, Patty and I. Um, basically sold our business and all that money, every dime of it went into a trust fund that is uh, uh, directly um, able to support the museum. So that is, I call it a stool, a three to four legged stool. So that's one leg of a stool to help support that museum long term. Um, mm -hmm. Jerry donated $30,000 cash at the convention last year and through a uh, remainder charitable trust, we set up a private foundation, but Jerry set up a remainder mm -hmm. charitable trust, and uh, the monies that are left in that trust, once Jerry meets his demise, hopefully many, many years from now, um, that money would go to the museum. So it's going to take, you know, philanthropists like you know Jerry and whoever who who are willing to look at their long-term goals for their life and say, hey, um, you know, if if we don't do something now, you know when something is going to get done to help the museum mm -hmm. and if not me who's going to do that so it definitely is going to take a handful of people to put in a lot of money um a, a, quite a few people putting in a large amount and then a whole bunch of people putting in small amounts i mean you get a whole bunch of people putting in five ten twenty bucks uh we've seen that on facebook All, last year we had over ten thousand dollars donated on facebook and a lot of that was very small amounts so I think you, you can't uh, lose sight of the fact that anything you can do to help does help. And uh, we invest most of that money. I try not to spend mm -hmm. any of the money 
for um, daily and monthly bills because we, we've got pretty substantial bills that go on every month. Mm -hmm. And I try to use mm -hmm. the money, uh, your ESOB parts, Matt Nickley and, and Anthony mm -hmm. Farrell, uh, your purchases through there help support the museum. We try to use that money to keep us afloat through the year. And then we take money out of our out of our trust fund that Patty and I set up through the Donnie Charitable Foundation to help mm -hmm. keep the museum afloat. The rest of the money um, we invest. Of course, you know, the last, last two months haven't been real good, but <laughs> we've had some good investment returns up to then, and I'm sure the market will, will bounce back, you know, once things stabilize again, which ultimately they will. Ultimately, they will. Hey, uh, text yeah. is open, guys. If you've got questions or comments for these uh, this team of SOB experts here, you please uh, post them. I'll mm -hmm. try to get them up on the screen. So, Sandy, it's great that the convention is happening there at the museum to draw attention to the museum and the needs there. Um, what else is going to be going on at the convention this year? If I come and I've never been, what should I expect? Well, of course, besides uh, seeing the collection, and you know, it struck me when Tom was talking earlier about how a lot of his visitors don't know a lot about SOBs when they enter the museum. This time it's gonna be different. Of course, everyone uh, that's coming is coming to see uh, the cars and uh, that's gonna be exciting. But there is, as Tom had said also, there's so much to see in the Black Hills area. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be organizing uh, some drives. Some of them will be self-guided and some of them will be, uh, you'll have the option of joining some people through the museum. Uh, talking a little bit, we, we're still nailing down the details, but we wanna do a drive probably Wednesday out to Devil's Tower, which is just over in Wyoming, uh, but uh, fairly close by, great drive. Tom actually taught me about that drive uh, one of the first times I visited the museum. And we'll take people, uh, we'll meet on Wednesday and do that, that's a little bit farther away. Thursday, we're trying to make a, a, an arrangement with the Rushmore parking area to try to get a photo op over at the Rushmore uh, parking area, uh, which overlooks the mountain. And uh, then we'll go for a ride. There's some really wonderful uh, roads in the Black Hills area. They have cut out uh, bridges. Uh, Iron Mountain Road is one that uh, has cut out bridges so you can see Mount Rushmore. And there are also just a lot of fun roads for driving, you know, third gear, 30 to 50 miles an hour, uh, driving around uh, well-maintained uh, roads. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Custer State Park uh, and some of the other uh, attractions in the area. So we're really going to focus on that mm -hmm. in addition to uh, the museum being the focus of uh, a lot of the daily activities, uh, the tech sessions. Uh, we want to hear more about the cars uh, that are being donated for display at the museum. Uh, another thing that, uh, Tom, I know uh, we had talked about, uh, some of the cars that are donated to the museum are, are gonna be eligible to be auctioned off. Uh, and that auction is gonna be happening during the convention and ending probably on Sunday uh, as, we, as the convention winds down. So that's gonna be really exciting uh, as well as um, some parts sales and and um, uh, things that Tom has in store, uh, which I'm sure are gonna be unique finds. You know, I wanted to thank uh, my friends over at, uh, since I'm here in Denver, uh, uh, EOS Motorsports up in Boulder, I stopped by to visit Bear and, and his mom, Christina, and they gave me uh, a couple of uh, little, some little uh, sob swag here, my ice scraper, uh, little hat. Nice. And, uh, fun stuff. This is a real nice, uh, uh, coffee mug here it will fit in the uh, cup holder too. Uh, nice. So nice. Tom's gonna have uh, some really uh, nice uh, rare uh, parts and uh, uh, unique. Uh, some hand, I'm sure some of your custom made uh, stuff as well uh, for for sale. So those are some of the some of the differences between. Uh, just a regular convention and, and having a convention at the museum. So let, let's answer some of these questions that have come in. What, uh, so Brian Lee is asking, what is the average temperature and what's the weather like uh, in July out there in South Dakota, Tom? Um, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you want? They, yeah. you like? they do get... We, we, you could have, I mean, typically in July, It'll probably be high 80s, low 90s during the day, very dry humidity, humidity down in the 20% range. Um, 
afternoons, sometimes you have a chance of a thunderstorm in some places. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty dry um, in the late part of July. Night times are very cool. Um, you know, we rarely ever run a AC because uh, the night will cool right off. And uh, we don't really have bugs, so we don't really have screens on anything. Um, so it's, it's pretty pleasant weather. You know, it's kind of weather that grows pine trees and uh, ponderosas and and so it's pretty good it can be hot in the day uh -huh. but it can also be you know we could have a 72 degree day and just be absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. um, perfect you know, i was uh, gonna say that what's the, what is it that you say tom they do get about a week of summer in sturgis or so or a few weeks yeah of summer. If, the, if summer falls on a weekend we have a party <laughs> so Ian, Ian's no, asking if people don't want to have a car on the show field, is there parking nearby? That's, uh, you know, that's, people have yeah. been concerned about so that. that. There's was, a question. Yeah, yeah that, and yeah. I didn't mean to mislead people. Uh, we have a limited show field for showing cars and uh, uh, people's choice in concourse, but there's plenty of free parking on the museum site and there will not have to, you will not have to pay in order just to, to bring your car and have your car there. And um, it's just that if you want your car to be actually in the running, um, I personally, I'm not gonna be entering my cars this year because I'm gonna be focused more on looking at the cars and enjoying the cars in the museum. Uh, so I think a lot of people that are coming and especially if you're driving your car long distances, uh, you might not uh, wanna be showing it, uh, but um, we have that opportunity. So yes, plenty of free parking right on the grounds. Hey, and I want to shout out, uh, Mike Roberts says he is watching from New Zealand right now. So Mike, if you come to SOC, we'll have an, a, special, a, a special award for you in some way, okay? <laughs> we'll work that out. Yeah, good on you, Mike. Yeah, good on you, mate. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, I actually had a... Uh, I had a question for you, Sandy. Um, I know that we're talking about uh, parking. What about, um, uh, this question came up at SOC 2021, hotel accommodations. I heard there was one hotel, but because of the area, um, we're not sure about uh, a vast amount of accommodations. Can you kind of comment on that, Sandy? Yeah, thanks for actually you reminding me, that, me about me that. that. So, Sandy? Yeah, Tom? I mean, I, I just could say, um, all you got to do is remember that the, the blood, there's camping places, there's hotels, there's stuff all around the Sturgis. Um, 350 to 500, 600,000, whatever people we, there's a lot of places to be. So, uh, and, and like, and I'll let Sandy comment on the, uh, on the Grand Mountain Resort and or on the, on the, uh, Deadwood the Lodge Deadwood is, Resort. yeah, is yeah. the, is the primary space. Tell us about that, Sandy. Oh, Sandy's image is shot there. He's frozen. So, so in Deadwood, yeah, Deadwood has all types of hotels in it. It's mm -hmm. actually a convention type town, unlike Sturgis. Sturgis is more of a rally place. There's uh, lots of campers around Sturgis. Mm -hmm. uh, Sturgis has about four, probably about five, six motels. Um, I'm so, back. And then the city's only, you know, 25 miles away, yeah. uh, 30 miles away. You got, you got all yeah. kinds of hotels around. Yep. A spearfish. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, we've got your back, Sandy. Yeah. What's the, uh, oh, great. Yeah. you can go to the website and see the costs and see all the information, but it's not terribly expensive. Yeah. I thought, you know, it looked like a pretty pretty reasonable price. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to say that the Friday and Saturday dinner are at the Deadwood Lodge, which is a little on the higher side, and a mm -hmm. lot of those rooms are already spoken for. Uh, but there are, as Tom had said, there are a number of hotels and many different types of lodging options to choose from. What I will suggest, though, is that if you even think you're going to be attending and you're not sure yet about everything, you might want to try to secure at least a, a tentative room because they do fill up, especially on the weekends uh, in the in the summer. It depends on how much you want to, whether you're willing to do camping uh uh, and something that's very, um, you know, primitive like that, then, uh, but if you do want a hotel room, you should try to at least secure one. And if you have to cancel it within the time, they, they only make you cancel it, you know, within a week or even a few days before. Yes. And there are a lot of Airbnbs around too. Like I know a lot of people are staying in Airbnbs. Yep. Some so people are renting there, whole houses. I mean, 
yeah, again, I mean, the, the area will support a million people during the rally. So there's plenty of places to be. You might have to drive a little bit, but there's plenty of, of yeah. amazing places around the hill. Uh, checking in, suggesting people check various Facebook groups and join a convoy that might be traveling from your area. That's a great idea. I know Ian in Chicago was thinking about getting together a convoy. I think that's great. Yeah, they uh, were talking about doing that from down, starting down in Atlanta as well. Mm -hmm. I know Shelly uh, out in Atlanta and, and Mark uh, from our board uh, wanted to start that. And probably Daniel will join in uh, from Texas and up, depending on which yeah, way they go. Nice, yeah, for the Ninth Museum, there was a convoy of biggins. And, oh, uh, fun. I know that you know, Winchester, Kentucky, Winchester, Virginia, I don't even know where, where Winchester is, but yeah, you know, that's. I know where one guy came from there, so it was about as far east as you can get. So, oh yeah, no! Yeah, you can do all kind of like sub, <laughs> sub convoys based on yeah. model. Well, I'm hoping Mark will drive through Fort Wayne and all that. We'll tag team it together going out there. How about that, bud? <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a try. <laughs> so I usually go in a little too fast yeah. for a convoy myself. What? Driving a sob above the speed limit? Who does that? So uh, let's talk a little bit about the reason that uh, you want to make it a vacation in your area out there. And, and, you know, we talked a little bit about Mount Rushmore. That's not too far away. Uh, some guy that some of us know sent a big cheesy photo of himself in front of Devil's Tower. How far away is Devil's Tower? Devil's probably about an hour and a half. Uh, most everything is within 50 miles to an hour. Devil's Tower is probably the furthest one. But like Sandy had mentioned, you've got the Needles Highway, which has these um, tunnels cut out, which is, you barely get through them with your car. But when you pop through it, it frames Mount Rushmore. Um, oh, that's cool. You've got the Custer State Park. You've got Badlands. The Badlands is probably, it's a mile marker, let's say uh, 110. We're at mile marker 32. Everything out there is based on mile markers, but uh, mm -hmm. and, and they're just all kinds of fun stuff to do in the hills. And the same reason the bikes come out. I mean, the bikes don't come out to be in Sturgis. The bikes come out, and all these car groups. We've got the Corvette Club, the Mustang Rally. Um, you know, you got there's probably about eight different car groups have rallies, and then of course the, the big motorcycle rally in the Black Hills. It's because what Sandy mentioned. It's the back roads and the side roads. And the tremendous fun you can have just be out exploring and there's no one around. I mean, it's pretty hard to find people when you're on the road. Um, and that is a peak yep. time, the end of July. So your some of your services will be busier, mm -hmm. but uh, everyone comments on bikes. You get literally at one time, you'll have 400,000 bikes in the hills. Yep. And they're like, we don't oh. see anyone when we're out riding around. Yeah. We're just wow. Like, just so just we did plan the convention with the uh, with an eye to the other events. So we tried to choose a weekend that wasn't already taken up with other groups, not to say there won't be some smaller ones, but mm -hmm. this is a good weekend where they're uh, sort of in between some of the Corvette Mustang stuff and just before the motorcycle rally really ramps up in August. So we think it's gonna be great. The hotels will be, as Tom said, the hotels and accommodations will be open and ready and uh, the crowds won't be quite as much as they will be a month later, so. Oh, well, that's yeah, great. I think. It's a it's an it's an incredible uh, you know vacation destination spot. Uh, so I think you're, that is indicative of the pre registrations you're seeing. People have to plan this further and further out. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to be able to in most cases day trip to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are planning. They're coming. You know we've got the museum. You got the Black Hills. You've got COVID hopefully winding down. So there's a lot of good reasons. A lot of good things going on to come to the convention and and. Uh, see what the club and, and the museum are, are doing. Well, here's Dennis Lynn checking in, saying he's got a convoy coming from the Pacific Northwest. And Kurt That's Holmes saying great. that uh, he's got a convoy starting in Maine. So meet in the middle, guys. That's kind of the plan. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Nice. Yeah, that's great. What you got, Mark? No, um, I'm just very excited about the uh, about the convention. In any case, I had a blasty blast last time at uh, in Albany uh, from last year. So I am so looking forward to. It. I've never been to the museum at all in my life, mm -hmm. so this will be my first time there. So I am so looking forward to uh, going out and visiting. And I'm sure that there's going to be a whole lot of other people uh, 
in my same position that I've never been in the museum before. Like you said, Tom, that uh, there's a lot of people that just uh, don't know about it or haven't been. And I'm glad we're bringing uh, more interest and more people in to, to see what it's all about and hopefully increase interest and enjoyment in the Saab brand. That's that's what we're all about. That's pretty much that's pretty much what we're hoping for. Yeah. And I think uh, as you people always wonder why in God's green earth would you put the museum in Sergio, South Dakota? And uh, that's a good question, but I think if you come and visit, you come and see what we have going, um, you know, and here's some of the reasons why we're there. You know, some of it is the weather is really good most of the time. The cars preserve extremely well, which is a problem we had at nauseum in Iowa, is the humidity, the bugs, the mold, the mice. It just, it drove us out of Iowa. Hmm. And this is a very dry environment in the Black Hills, and it preserves stuff extremely well. So I think... If you come and, and see what we're doing and kind of catch a little bit of the vision of what we're trying to establish here, um, almost everyone that's a Saab person that shows up, when, once they have been there a bit, they go, okay, now I get it. Now I understand why you're here. So, you know, because the initial concept of it is a bit crazy. I don't know. Yeah, well, you look pretty well preserved, Tom. So it's it's working. It's, something's working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that'll be later tonight. I'll be very well preserved. <laughs> no, that's pickled. That's what. That's a different, whole different process. <laughs> whole, whole different process. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so what type of uh, seminars or workshops or educational things going on? I mean, you learn a ton just being on the show floor and talking to other sob guys. But beyond that, Sandy, what you got? Well, we we're doing uh, we're taking advantage of the museum where we. One of the things we started throughout the, the uh, COVID and a little bit before was doing more outside. So we are gonna probably have some people that are gonna wanna do some things. It's fun to do demonstrations out at the car, uh, whether there's uh, Jeff from Orio doing some demonstrations or some people showing off some of the vintage uh, stuff that you really have to see to understand. And also Tom's museum, there's a separate part which has a full working shop. It's, uh, to see some cars being worked on and to see some examples uh, in a way that we haven't been able to offer at a convention, to have a car yeah, with a you lift. Normally at the, right, at the conventions, historically, and I've been to a lot of conventions, um, you know, you have a hotel room or a mm -hmm. parking lot, and, and, you know, those are subject to the parking lot. You might, it might start raining, you know, you never know what's got for weather. So with a 14,000 square foot shop with about seven hoists in there, We'll be able to have cars up in the air. Like say we want to do suspension work or brake work. Um, it'll be it'll be very dynamic, which is so unusual for what we've been able to do in the past, you know, to have uh, a, a physical shop to work in. Uh, I think that'll be really beneficial to those trying to learn um, the ins and outs of their car, want to see a little secret here or there or something to make the car a little bit better. Man, I think uh, I think we've done the job. If if you if you're this far into the program and you're not thinking that I'm going to get in my car and drive to Sturgis, then something's wrong with you. So yeah, <laughs> we'll hope we'll see you guys out there. Uh, last thoughts before oh, yeah. we wrap this no, up, fellas. Yeah, Ray K. You know he drove his '65 Saab '96 three-cylinder two-stroke all the way across the country last year. Yes, Albany, he New did. York, you know Albany, Oregon. So if you can drive that car across country, then I think you're classic 900 or your 9,000 or whatever. We'll yeah. Probably make it. Probably will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if it, it if it breaks down on the road, you're probably going to see somebody not too far away who knows something about it, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We know how to tow sobs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight and sharing a little mm -hmm. bit about the Saab Owners Convention. Let me get those dates back up again. What are those again, Sandy? Uh, the 21st through the 24th of July, Thursday okay. through Sunday. All right, so you and want to go. Some other events happening. Yep. Yep. We will and, be doing a charity auction for the museum on Sunday. Okay. And we'll yep. have a part sent through the week with donated stuff. And uh, so we'll be doing a lot of, lot of fun stuff. Okay. And you can just go to sobclub.com and register there, or uh, it's on Facebook as well. You'll find links to, to yep. more information. Info at sobclub.com. If there's any questions, you can email me as well. And you don't have to be a member, right? Just come on along. Well, to be on the yeah. show field, though, you want to be a member. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Part of our insurance We can get them in the museum. Yeah, you can always yeah. go there. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll figure uh, something out. <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us. Appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for the invite. Thanks. You bet, guys. Thank you, you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Lee. You bet. Have Thank a great you. week, everyone. Thank you, Sam. Yep. So, Mark, you've been to a lot more of these than I have, uh, but uh, I've enjoyed the two that I've gone to. And so, I really, why not? Uh, you're going to be around people who are just like you. Absolutely. Now, I just want to set the record straight. I've been to two owners' conventions so far. So, we, I think we got the same attendance rate. But um, I was at the convention in uh, uh, Maryland, and I was at the convention in uh, New York. Um, and those have been uh, fantastic so far. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Now, the funny part is we're talking about um, driving out there. Uh, I did have a little question for your Saab 900. Are you going to have time to get that T5 conversion done before you drive out there? Yeah, that is, uh, that is my hope. You bet. Uh, <laughs> and uh, want to get that thing converted over to, a, to the T5. And, uh, and um, I picked up a... Um, a uh, front-mounted intercooler and one of the new oil coolers that uh, Isaac and the guys at Do88 are have made. So I might come with awesome. a T5 and some extra enhancements on my 900 this year. So yeah, awesome. I'm pretty confident we'll get that done. Sounds like it's going to be a blast. <laughs> I think it will. Next Thursday night here on Psalm Talk Live. Take care, guys. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.